party ahead of 2023 election uh, is getting momentum. And of course, uh, concerns among stakeholders uh, within the party um, is also rising, uh, especially with regards to uh, the lingering crisis, uh, leadership crisis in the party. And of course, what needs to be done to save it? Um, uh, while you know the ruling opposition party, the APC, is having it uh, unfair share of uh, challenges, especially arising from the uh, the aftermath of its uh, World Congresses across the country, and of course uh, the leadership. I mean, the battle uh, for the soul of the party again ahead of 2023. Uh, the PDP seems to have uh, joined, you know, followed suit uh, in the same direction. Now, the current leadership of the party is uh, being embattled, you know, uh, from different fronts, especially uh, to uh, for those who have been keenly watching, you know, the political terrain, especially the PDP, uh, by forces, you know, who wants uh, to control, you know, the soil of the party ahead of the elections. Uh, the, the interests of some governors uh, who are also eyeing the 2023 uh, presidency uh, is uh, beginning to manifest and the party is uh, further enmeshed in crisis, you know, having been dealing with this internal crisis for a long time and of course are battling, you know, to regain its faith, you know, after the defeat uh, it has suffered in 2015 and 2019. Uh, some stakeholders within the party are worried that uh, the party should not uh, allow itself to be, uh, you know, to have such uh, a criminal that could further jeopardize its interests, uh, especially now that, uh, uh, you know, it's been repositioned, so to speak, uh, to uh, find its rootings and, of course, see if it can wrestle power from the ruling APC. Now, this is our topic of discussion this evening on democracy in practice. Uh, but before we commence the discussion, uh, let me uh, introduce to you Kodwina Munde, who will give us an update uh, with regards to happening uh, within the polity. Good evening and welcome to our political news segment. My name is Godwin Amundi, Equity State Governor Kyle Fine, who is also the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum has challenged his colleagues to engage in projects that they will be remembered for unless on personal aggrandizement. Fayemi was in Mina, Niger State capital on Tuesday, 2021, at the instance of his Niger State counterpart, Al Hajjah Borka Sanibelu, to commission reconstructed and rehabilitated Bosworth State Group Network. In an interview shortly after the project commissioning, Fayemi encouraged his colleagues. To work hard to leave behind legacies that will outlive them, but which will be remembered for, in line with the policies and programs of President Muhammadu Buhari led administration. Describing Governor Billu as having done his best to improve on the people's immediate needs, notwithstanding limited funds at his disposal, Governor Fahimi said, I can see the passion of your governor into the interest of the citizenry. Governor Fahimi, Describing Bello as having done his best to improve on the people's immediate needs, notwithstanding limited funds at his disposal. Governor Fahimi also reminded his fellow governors on the need not to neglect primary responsibilities of improving on the education and health sector of their respective states, while also not forgetting the pensioners who had served the states meritoriously. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Tahiru Jaga, has cautioned Nigerians against voting for the ruling of Progressive Congress, APC, and the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP. Speaking in Kaduna State during an interview with BBC, Ausadi ex INEC boss argued that the two major political parties were synonymous with corruption asking the masses to choose ahead of the 2023 general elections. 
And of course, speaking further, the 64 year old professor of political science at the Bayou University, Kano, says he registered as a member of the People's Redemption Party to see how he could help Nigeria. He alleged that those in the major political parties have destroyed everything and had made the parties so stigmatized that whichever good person joins the parties will be considered. And the agitations for the country to split the former enemy boss bloomed. The move on bad leadership in Nigeria, noting it had thrown the nation into its current uh, problems. And finally, on the segment, the crisis working main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, has reached its peak as seven national officers resigned from their roles in the party. The party chieftains in different leaders addressed to its national secretary on Tuesday said their decision to forfeit their positions in the party. Is aged on the backdrop of being sidelined and unfairly treated by the national chairman Uche Secondos. Some of the executive members include the National Deputy Publicity Secretary Diran Odeemi, Deputy National Organizations uh, Organizing Asan Yakubu, and the Deputy National Women Leader Hadiza Maru. The latest event has further worsened the leadership crisis rocking the party at an Etwar spokesperson of the party's presidential campaign. Kashim Afibwa accused the chairman and the leadership of a series of offenses. Afibwa had called on the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, the FCC, and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission in April to put the party's leadership. He visited the offices of the anti corruption agencies to submit his petition and asked them to look into the financial transactions of Mr. Sikandas in the spirit of transparency accountability and bookkeeping in line with the existing anti-corruption laws. He also alleged that much of the financial transactions of the PDP under its present leadership have been stored in mystery and accused the leadership of a deliberate attempt to shortchange the party in the build-up to 2023 general elections. Meanwhile, the spokesperson of the party, Kola Ula Bodillo, says during media briefing that the NWC of the party Dialogue must key holder to put out the fire had since begun. He emphasized that the internal conflict resolution mechanism of the party has also been immediately activated to put all the issues behind them and therefore called on all the leaders, stakeholders, and members of the party to remain calm as they collectively work towards resolving all the issues. And on that note, we draw the curtains on this segment. Democracy in practice. Very much, uh, Gordon Amunde, for that update on political happenings uh, in the country. Now, back to our talking point, we're looking at the crisis, uh, the leadership crisis, locking the People's Democratic Party, Nigeria's leading opposition political party. And of course, uh, this is a fallout of what happened yesterday the resignation of seven of its national uh, officers, you know, citing. Uh, fair, uh, you know, unfair treatment by leadership of the party uh, and so on. Now, before then, there has been um, a lot of uh, concerns with regards to uh, the party uh, playing its role as a leading opposition party in Nigeria uh, because of that uh, crisis that has been rocking it, especially that of leadership. And of course, with this, uh, there has been concerns regarding uh, the survival, anyway, some would say it is too big to fall. Uh, a party that has pride itself, you know, to be uh, the leading uh, major political party uh, in Africa. Now, uh, it's having a fair share of internal crisis uh, that um, have been raising concerns among critical stakeholders. Now, the former governor, I think, of our uh, system, talking about Harry Sraki Dixon, uh, was recently cautioning the leadership uh, of the party and of course the critical stakeholders on the need to save the party uh, from you know further crisis especially uh, looking at what has been happening uh, and of course he's talking about 
uh, the need to learn from the what is happening to the major uh, the, the ruling party in the country talking about the APC. Now some are already contemplating uh, the need to have a caretaker committee uh, for the party at the national level. Uh, but this is coming also in the face of uh, uh, uncertainties and you know, anxieties regarding the Supreme Court judgment, uh, which has also sent shivers uh, to some within the foes of the APC. And all of this is happening as we approach the 2023 general elections. As some would say, the permutations have begun in earnest. The struggle for the soul of the political parties uh, who are, you know, the vehicle uh, for uh, the emergence of political parties and subsequent emergence uh, of the president, uh, Shell, and other political office holders uh, has begun in earnest. Now, in the studio, I have um, an, a PDP uh, chieftain talking about Amadja uh, Abid uh, who we are Kudima, who will be talking to us on this internal crisis of the PDP. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Right. Um, well, um, to chronicle you know, the event, some will say uh, the PDP, which is, uh, uh, I don't know whether it is still, you know, used to be the largest political party in Africa, uh, had had you know, a series of uh, setbacks uh, you know, right from 2015 uh, election 2019, and of course, um, uh, and it's still happening. Have, have happened this crisis, you know, internally. Um, why is it difficult, you know, for the party to uh, to read, you know, or to uh, to, to put all of these uh, challenges, you know, it had uh, in the past, and of course, uh, forge ahead and work stronger. Uh, with all the caliber of people it has, without the spirit it has, and all of that. Well, you know, this could be uh, inclined to human nature. Yeah. And when you have a political party that is so big and gigantic, mm. you have to have this type of thing happening. Mm. In fact, if we had to go with the theory of the economic, mm. uh, 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 economic empowerment mm. that has to do with uh, Marx, uh, Karl Marx, mm. uh, it says the people clamor for an objective. I mean, the forces, when they attain such objectives, they are now resort to antagonistic cooperation. Mm. PDP is a big party. Mm. It has entrenched and deeply rooted. Mm. And if you look at it, in the history of political parties formation in the country since independence, in the First Republic, we have five political parties. Mm. Second Republic, we also have five political parties. Mm. In the Third Republic, Republic, DTO, we have five political parties. Mm. When PDP came on board, it came not in the process of formation of a political party, but as a mass movement. Mm. When you have the GAT, mm. the graduated and expanded to G32, mm. and what of course to a political party, mm. and it came to PDP. Whether one like it or not, will have to acknowledge the fact that PDP is gigantic as big. Mm. And I can say it's even the best. Mm. Why? Because structurally, mm. it is formulated and it has also deeply rooted, it is seriously entrenched. Mm. In this process, you have national background. Mm. Background of people from national backgrounds from different things, mm. from crannies and corners of the country. That comes into a melting pot mm. where you have several political parties from various mm. uh, 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 sections of the country with various objectives and different objectives mm. with different backgrounds come to a melting pot mm. and from the PDP. Mm. When the party was inaugurated on the 31st of November 1998 at mm. Sheridan in Abuja, mm. it came up mm. to an assembly of large, the mighty, and the big. While you have the team of professors in the midst, mm. you have political juggernauts of the north and the south and the middle mm. also in the fold, and you have all sorts of people and kind of people who are massively exposed and have no reservations of a political party for a very long time who are vastly experienced mm. coming together into the political party that calls PDP today. Mm. He 
if you have people of this type of background, if you have a larger assembly of this magnitude, mm. certainly you will have Christ. Mm. Why? Because you have what mm. Kalima says antagonist to cooperation. That's right. That is the situation. Okay. Yes, just like any other political party, you, you, you know, uh, uh, coming together of people of different, you know, opinions, shades of opinion, you know, interest and what have you, uh, is a recipe, you know, for crisis, internal crisis. But all political parties perhaps have what they call internal mechanisms to address, you know, uh, such, such crisis. Um, I think that is the essence, you know, of having these structures of the political parties, from the National Working Committee to the National uh, Executive uh, uh, Council uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, even the Board of Trustee, you know. Uh, but over the years, you know, since I'm still going back to the defeat, you know, in 2015, uh, since the defeat, you know, the, 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 the PDP has suffered, uh, it appears, you know, all the juggernauts that you talk about, all those, uh, you know, that, that, that matters within the party uh, have left it, you know, to uh, deteriorate, to degenerate into what we are seeing today. Uh, what is the greatest undoing of this political party which has found itself as the largest party in Africa? Well, um, uh, 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 as we analyze, mm. it, is, it is part of the process of democracy. Mm. Uh, to agree and disagree, mm. when you have disagreement, sector, sector, always a process. Mm. Uh, by and large, mm. PDP could not be dismissed to have said it's a crisis riddle party. Never. Mm. It has crisis, yes, on and again. Mm. And this has started even when the party was formed, as I said, in 1998, mm. when it has its own first proclamation chairman in person of late Alice Ikone. Mm -hmm. Before that, today, we have 10 national chairmen mm. of the party, or two active national chairmen making 12. Mm. that came in the mantle of leadership. Mm. And it uh, surprised one to understand that all these chairmen of the political party, the chairman, the national chairman of the PDP, mm. all the chairmen have not ended well. Mm. They have one crisis of leadership or another, and, that consumes. <laughs> yes, yes. and then the process consumes them. Mm. So this one is not also mm. a different one. Mm. It doesn't come as a surprise to anybody mm. because is part and parcel of process of democracy, as I said. Mm. Alice Ikwemi, mm -hmm. late Alice Ikwemi, mm. came on board as the first population chairman of the party. Mm. He was to contest an election as a president. He left and then Salomona, mm. Salomona mm. came on board as the second national chairman. Mm. It was only several mm. that has a successful tenure of office as a national chairman. Mm. When he left, after Chief Senator Chief Balogos Damari came on board, mm. as a television chairman, there was also a crisis of leadership. Mm -hmm. Damari unfortunately could not complete his tenure. Mm. He has to live in 2001. Mm. And what happened was also as a result of crisis because there was processes and efforts mm. to assess his tenure. Mm. And some of the anti damaris insisted that he has to go. Mm. That enshrined a lot of crisis in the party. And there was nothing one can do, he has to live. Mm. So, all these national chairmen, one after the other, mm. had similar had challenges. Similar challenges, right? And it's very simple mm. uh, because, as I said, the background of the people that came together to form the political party one, mm. and then the issue of managing of success has been another one. Mm. And certainly, the problems of mm. internal management or internal democracy. Mm. These are some of the fundamentals. Yeah, talking about internal democracy, which is very key, you know, and synonymous with all the political parties uh, in the country. Now, why is it difficult, you know, uh, to achieve internal democracy? Um, uh, despite the fact that you talked about very inter various interests, you know, within the parties and all of that. Now, uh, some see the influence, if you like, of, of governance. So, so I'm going back to the question I asked you earlier. Perhaps here is the aside. And that is why well, you, people like you, you know, in the party, the elders and all that matters, allow the party to continue to degenerate into what it is today. Uh, why is that happening? Is it that you have abandoned the party or is it that you have lost confidence in the party's ability to, to bounce back to life? Not, not, that, not that people have abandoned the party mm. and not that people are really interested to make sure mm. 
but we ran the party successfully. You know, there are people who are interested with leadership responsibility. Mm. And such people have the responsibility to make sure that the party is governed effectively. Mm. And when you have a political party, mm. certainly you have the constitution, mm -hmm. you have the manifesto. These are instruments of governance. That's right. And if you have people who have abuses, over these implementations or governing mm. the constitution, then there must be a problem. So, indeed, misunderstanding in the way the process of governance should be implemented, mm. promulgations of policies and implementations, etc., etc., have been mm. mm. the key. Mm. And then the party management itself. Mm. Yes, PDP now an opposition party. Is coming to a different set of responsibility mm. is that it's new. Mm. Why new? Because it has been a government. Mm. It has been the party. I still learn in the act of opposition but political parties. Certainly, yes, certainly. After certainly, years, when you are six, six years. Yes, certainly. Yes. When you are in, in governance for 16 years, you are running the rudiments of government. Mm. You are also promulgating policies and implementation super policies. Mm that have helped the country mm. and unfortunately we talk about propaganda and some other things and you are you need to do it when I think you have power less and power was taking over from you certainly you have to learn when I think you have propaganda because you know it was a manifestation of uh, of the inability again of the party to deliver the goods to the ordinary people now mm -hmm. the apprehension you know ahead of 2015 election was that Nigerians were running for change they were running for an alternative having had the PDP for 16 years perhaps without not uh, getting the, 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 the desired result so when you see that uh, it, 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 it as a result of uh, I mean because uh, some say it was a revolt you know on the part of the people who felt that they are not getting what they want well, I don't think so. I don't think so because if you, you know, we don't like to go to go back to the first The only thing we have to do was go to analysis. You can understand in that very election there was apathy. Mm. Both of the apathy was there. Okay. Again, most of the people were disenchanted. Mm. They were disenfranchised mm. in the process of the voting. Mm. And even when the APC emerges, mm. the election was inconclusive. Perhaps the president mm. have all of the elections have said he has surrendered, etc., etc. That was the reason. Well, even even, 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 that, even like that, one cannot dismiss to have said that PDP has not tried its efforts. Mm. It has made governance a super. Mm. It has run a wonderful policies that were result oriented and with a very serious welfare that has intact. Mm. So many things. Well, why are they well, well, the struggle with Nigerian democracy itself? Why was it uprooted then? That's why I call propaganda. <laughs> that is why I mentioned propaganda. That is why I also say there was apathy and then the election was abandoned. When the president says he has off his hands. That was what he considered. When he considered, well, I was surprised. Most of the critical state workers in the PDP were surprised mm -hmm. because the election has not come to a conclusion. And when, 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 when he conceded, they have seen the right on the wall and uh, he was, uh, you know, he was doing the, the honorable thing, you know, to concede defeat, which he has done in good uh, faith, and Nigerians applauded him for that. Yeah, absolutely. He has done very well. PDP has done very well also in that mm -hmm. because they have seen. A crisis looming in country, mm. and if a crisis looming in a country in such a manner, the best thing it was a credit which they have done, so that you can consolidate democracy. Mm. We have seen abortion of democracy in various times, and the process of democracy has been aborted not once or twice. Mm. And we have seen the incursions of the military. Mm. We have seen impractical of the military administration. Mm. How deteriorated the country has become mm. until when the PDP come to rescue. Mm. So, mm. The members of G18, G32. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and the policies of PDP, mm. the policies of PDP certainly were viable, mm. very, very viable, and has also promoted the Nigerian democracy and welfare. Uh, you know, but certainly, you know, as a PDP, you never agree less you know, to that. Uh, but then, looking at, um, you know, in every context, there must be a winner and a loser. And if you lose an election, perhaps the expectation is that you go back to the drawing board. You
look at you know what has uh, led to your defeat and what needs to be done you know to strengthen i mean to to regain you know uh, that um, uh, uh, strength and of course be able to forge ahead but it has not become you know almost a difficult Herculean task for the pdp uh, to forge ahead at different points you know there have been have been attempts you know to rebrand at some point you know first it came with the apology you know apologize to nigerians for what you know they've done i, I mean asking for for forgiveness so to speak and then you come up with the you know a, a, a attempt you know to rebrand so that uh, you can you can present you know a better alternative to nigeria but that didn't work out why is it difficult you know to come up with i mean to to give nigeria that alternative you know uh, they, they, are, they are yearning for well alternative is in the pipeline mm -hmm. people have now seen and tested mm -hmm. the governance of pdp for 16 years yeah, yeah that's right and then now APC yeah. has come on board mm -hmm. and we are into the the six years of APC government. Mm -hmm. So people have tested mm -hmm. whether rightly or wrongly and they make a comparative analysis between the two. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that uh, there is no basis of comparison mm -hmm. in terms of policies that are viable, policies that are viable. That had promoted governance mm -hmm. and even process of democracy, like what the PDP did, mm -hmm. in comparison to what is ongoing, mm -hmm. in comparison to what is obtainable. Mm -hmm. When you talk about so many things, you can now have variables that could mm -hmm. come on, that could be compared mm -hmm. between the two mm -hmm. mountains of leadership. That's right. And nobody would dismiss to have said that PDP mm -hmm. didn't do very well. Okay, and the fact I don't want us to deviate because we're talking about leadership of the PDP and the crisis involved. But then, uh, if we're talking about comparison, now we'll be talking about you know different policies and how they impact uh, or otherwise uh, on Nigerians. But coming back to our discussion now, I was actually um, trying to chronicle you know and get from you, uh, from your perspective, what has been the greatest undoing on of the party? Why is it you know in perpetual internal crisis? Well, my picture in China crisis, I told you earlier mm -hmm. that we have a conglomeration mm -hmm. of people from different backgrounds, which is one. Number two, there is concentration of internal democracy. Mm -hmm. And the few people that you entrust a responsibility in them, people mm -hmm. who are managing or managing the party. Mm -hmm. uh, the people to be all responsible. In this case, mm. people are blaming the nation chairman. Mm. Who are blaming the nation chairman are members of his team, the nation working committee. Mm. Who says that the residual account is not doing well? Mm. They have their reasons, and they'll come to a point that some of the members in national mm. executive committee and EC or NEC resign, mm. and one from the NWC. You know, these are uh, 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 different communities mm. where you have the NWC that runs the day to day activities of the party. Mm. There are permanent members who are involved mm. in implementation of policy. Mm. And the NEC are responsible for promulgation of policy decisions mm. in the party. And people who are working with him say mm. that he's not doing well. Mm. And they have their reasons. Mm. So now we have to ask the new OT to have a meeting mm. so that they can have these reasons mm. to look at it whether it's palatable or impalatable mm. and to see whether they are right or wrong so that uh, the Bible decisions will be taken. Mm. Decisions that will promote the party, decisions that will also help to lead in the board this crisis because mm. the PDP should not afford to have crisis at this material time. Mm. Why? Because we are approaching an election in 2023 and you can see what is happening in the country. Mm. There are serious issues that are on the ground that has to do mm. with violence uh, mm. in one another economy. Problems of insecurity here and there. Mm. But, uh, but it was a carryover from the PDP. Not carryover. Mm. Mm. There is, in fact, some say it is even better compared to what we have during your stewardship, your uh, party stewardship. I, I, I don't think it's better when you have 3 to 4 million 
when people know it, it must be through insurgency. And when you have over 4.5 million people mm. in the most ways dying because of uh, 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 climatic and water climatic and poverty. Mm. And, and then what to say is better. How does it make better? Uh, it's a matter of uh, conviction anyway. We will turn to look at more of those issues. Um, uh, in case you're just joining us, the program is Democracy in Practice. We're looking at the internal democ- uh, internal crisis uh, in the PDP, Nigeria's uh, leading opposition political party. And I've been interfacing with uh, uh, Legislative uh, Amin Salehu Yakudima, uh, a chieftain of the party. Uh, together we'll be looking at you know the genesis, perhaps, the manifestations and of course perhaps solutions uh, to this internal crisis. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us. Democracy in practice. Fellow Nigerians, you have been told a lie. A lie that your vote does not count. A lie that your action in an election does not matter. So you take no action. You take no action to vote. You take no action to change your life. You take no action to find the right leader. And you sell your votes for peanuts. You sell your future. You never bother to get a voter's card. You make no attempt to save the future generation. This lie was propagated by people who do not want you to understand your real power. The power of the people. The power of unity. They don't want you to understand that you can actually make a change. That you have the power. That your vote counts. And by voting, you decide the future of this country. You decide the future of the next generation. We must put an end to this lie today. Join the continuous voter registration and take your power back. Register online or in person. Educate your friends and family on the power to vote and electing the right leader. This message is brought to you by We Together Nigeria. Let's do it ourselves. Democracy in practice. Very much for staying with us. Uh, it's still democracy in practice, and we're looking at uh, internal PDP crisis. And of course, uh, we have a PDP chieftain, Minister Lehu Yakudima. Uh, before the break, we were looking at, uh, he has started telling us, you know, uh, giving us a background with regards to um, the genesis, if you like, or uh, what is making this crisis brewing, you know, in the, in the PDP, and uh, perhaps. Um, um, is, is, is substantiating on that. Now, uh, uh, many, you know, political analysts and pundits are, are looking at the crisis, you know, uh, especially now that it is becoming, uh, it, it is uh, gaining momentum, uh, you know, as a result of uh, struggles for the soil of the party by some governors, some key governors who have indicated interest, you know, ahead of 2023 elections. Um, what role do you think you know this is playing in in in, in uh, making the I mean fueling the crisis? Well, uh, so many rules, and uh, you are right. It has mm. to be informed by aspiration, mm. aspiration by different people who wants to be presidents and others who wants to be governors in their respective states, as well as people who are aspiring for one or the other. Mm. And of course, the stepping stone mm. and the aspiration of any office mm. is to the party apparatus. Okay. And they have to struggle to see how they can reposition themselves, mm. try to see how they can inject mm. people who are their allies mm. and disciples and loyalists. Mm. They will also be in various organs of the party so mm. that they can kickstart and try to manage their process very well. Mm. You will not blame them because it's legitimate, mm. it's also allowed in 
political party, even against the interests of the party, not against the interests of the party. Mm. Uh, this is one aspect. Mm. We are looking at the causes or reasons. That's right. This is one aspect. Mm. And then we have members, you know, the party have uh, various organs. That's right. Statutory and non statutory organs. Mm. You have at uh, the apex the national convention. Mm. Down the line, you have the national executive committee, mm. NEC or NEC. Yeah. You have the national working committee, and then you have the mm. the 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 caucus mm. uh, as well as the BOT, the and BOT. The working committee. Yes, there are mentioned the working yeah. committee and the BOT. Mm. The BOT is the conscience of the party because it's also mm. the elders mm. of the party that supervise or oversees yeah. processes and activities. Mm. All working committee service in the, the day. party yeah. internally. Right. It runs the day's activities of the party. Mm. It also manage the mm. party apparatus. Mm. And then make promulgated policy. Mm. There's dash to the working committee for implementation. Mm. So along the line, you can see that there are working relationships mm. which are supposed to be considered and intended with the provisions of the constitution. Mm. And Human attitude in turn, you know, development by certain offices mm. and perhaps personality class that you opt to engage mm. and moral administration mm. that also becomes of the ideas and hope. Mm. This aggregates to a certain recipe mm. that graduated to crisis, mm. and that is what is obtainable. Mm. You can see members who have resigned, yeah, the reason says they can no longer nation chairman. Why can't you work with national chairman? Perhaps national chairman is not profiling. Perhaps national chairman mm. is daily. Perhaps they have reasons. Mm. The reasons could be argued that it will generate to a resignation. Mm. And one in the members of the working committee who also mm. sits with the national chairman almost on a weekly basis mm. because they have regular meetings that comes weekly mm. for implementations of policies and says also he has resigned. Reasons he can no work with national chairman. Mm. Then the chairman should be put to tax to explain why people mm. are resigning. Yeah, why I not why I don't interested to work with you. Yeah, I'm actually coming to that because yes, who applied the brakes? Is the national chairman is not forthcoming? Uh, is still treating you know um, uh, key team members unfairly? Uh, because what we saw yesterday was uh, strange. Taking a look at the list, you know, uh, actually. All that have designed, I mean, resigned, you know, the senior office, the officers of the party are deputies, you know, in their respective capacities. So, uh, one begin to wonder, uh, who has there been, you know, an existing faction within the leadership? Because if chairman of those, you know, organs or those uh, uh, structures are, are still, are still remain with the national chairman and deputies are resigning, it, it means there's something wrong. Well, I don't like to insinuate anymore. But, but honestly, honestly, mm. uh, I have been in practice mm. in the administration and management of party for a very long time. Mm. You know, certainly there is a very serious disagreement mm. between the principal officer and the deputy or the assistant. Mm. And it depends on the dispensations of an individual. Most of them, most of them don't carry the deputies mm. or the assistants alone. Mm. in the process of implementation. And there's no way mm. when you have an office that have full of activities as such as that with budget and so many things of responsibility and mm. you dominate mm. everything. You have taken and taken everything on board that says the deputy should not participate mm. or your deputy or your subordinate mm. should not also participate. That is wrong to me. And that is honestly what is obtainable in most of these cases. Mm. When you get a deputy is not even allowed to have an office in the National Secretariat, mm. Mm. and then you have the principal offices with a very big office and confidential secretaries mm. and even personnel mm. who are auxiliary staffs. Mm. And we are comfortable learning the office mm. of the principal, which the deputy also have a responsibility and key mm. to play, mm. and is not being allowed to play. Mm. And we generate 
crisis? Yeah, but, but there are a lot of mechanisms, you know, and channels to address grievances or to, channel, to, to channel grievances. So, right. For instance, before it culminates into resignation, uh, perhaps uh, those that have resigned have lost faith in, in, the, in the ability of the leadership of different structures of the party to, uh, I mean, amicably resolve, you know, the, the concerns. Um, and, and that's what, is it to say that other organs of the party that could apply, you know, or could ensure some level of sanity and fairness are not also functional? Well, one could say that they're functioning. They may be functioning, but mm. perhaps there should be, there should be, as you say, mechanisms. There are mechanisms. There are mechanisms. Mm. And these mechanisms will be effective mm. when people are interested to make them to be functional and effective. If the issue is so often and they don't like to give a listen here. There's no way such people will function. There's no way the mechanism will also function. So this is very serious issue. Mm. That is why we are saying that it should be put to tax mm. so that it will be put by the by the DOT. Yeah. And the DOT should question and intervene mm -hmm. so that things will be in the board. Yeah. Some are already contemplating perhaps uh, the the uh, is it is it a possibility now the dissolution of the of the uh, leadership of the party? I understand they have they still have women, you know, uh, to to round up the tenure uh, because you know it is structurally designed. I mean, there are tenure for you know such offices. Um, some are looking at uh, perhaps uh, um, the possibility of uh, having a caretaker committee. Uh, in, in, you know, in the face of this crisis, um, how are you looking at those who are suggesting this? Well, caretaker committee will be a last resort. Mm. It is cannot be resolved. So the result will be recovery. There are mechanisms, as you say, and these mechanisms should be allowed to work mm. and function. Mm. This is the time that researchers and conduct should be seen to be up to it. Mm. To see how we can call all a great individuals. See, on the round table and then mm. see how mm. they can sort it out. Yeah, even though the damage has been done, we're talking about seven have gone already. Yes, yeah, seven have gone. Seven have gone. Uh, putting putting uh, into the committee mm. or caretaker, as you say, mm. uh, improve also certain decisions. Unless if mm. the situation at hand cannot be resolved at recovery, number one. Mm. And you see, there are three, four months to go, certainly. Yeah. The convention is coming in November, mm. but before the go, the party uh, uh, officers have the right mm. to pass vote of no confidence if they so like mm. on national working committee in the BC to go, mm. and then to pay way for the constitutions mm. of the caretaker committee, mm. and and A, there is massive reservation. Mm. Maybe it means you will leave your committee in a big. Mm. And when you don't have the control of membership to constitute mm. the the prerequisites mm. for the member to 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 ha to to run the party at the caretaker. So to run the to run the party effectively in the name of the provisions of the constitution, mm. then there must be a caretaker in place. And this caretaker will come mm. in Two individuals who will run the party up mm. to the period of convention so that they can have a successful convention mm. to have new leadership. Right. But there are some who are also, you know, calling for a strain, like uh, Senator Sereki Dixon, you know, the fact that there is no need, you know, to throw the baby with the bathwater. Uh, what is needed at this moment, according to him, is to support, you know, the, the existing leadership of the party, perhaps call it to order. Uh, support it, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, get things done before the, the expiration of their tenure, um, so that you don't also create, you know, crisis that could jeopardize the interests of the party uh, ahead of the election and so on. Uh, how are you looking at this uh, suggestion again? Well, we may be right, but it depends on mm. what is obtainable on ground, number one. Mm. It depends on also the ability mm. of people who are involved in the forthcoming. Uh, it's a good advice anyway, mm. because this argument mm. generates serious crisis, mm. and no one can be able to say mm. when crisis uh, will be 
curtain how crisis could be bring to an end nobody can tell mm. when it starts you have no control and it is it will go to be like a wildfire mm. so nobody will be happy to allow the party mm. to generate to such a position mm. but if the the uh, 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 committee will be a viable option for the party mm. so be it mm. but, but there is also concern around that because uh, some are looking at what is happening you know at the APC uh, with its uh, caretaker and uh, conventional planning committee and so on uh, especially in, light, in the light of uh, the Supreme Court judgment which has uh, some will say has provided a pathway or you know has opened a window uh, for party I mean for those uh, stakeholders in the political parties to see uh, that uh, well even though there are two different scenarios actually mm -hmm. uh, here we are talking about a governor who was as a chairman of the caretaker committee and so on and so forth uh, but um, by and large the party you know the PDP some see it as being run by few individuals uh, you know not uh, as you or you put earlier on the fact that uh, it should be a people's political party a people you know it should be run by the people and not a selective view now uh, how do you see, see that you know playing out because some say the financiers the, the superior financiers of the party uh, will have to have a say uh, because they've been the, the ones who run in the party you know since it has uh, the, I mean since it, it lost you know uh, uh, um, and the government and so on. So, how are you looking at those who are, I mean, the, the influence of those who have brought the party up to this stage, you know, to make it survive, and those who are also now coming in to wrestle, you know, from uh -huh. the power from them? Yeah. Well, the way this is an assumptive scenario, mm -hmm. uh, PDP in the beginning mm -hmm. couldn't have a panacea. Mm -hmm. An individual or group of individuals financing the party. Mm. People have been putting in their money on contributions and they also generate money internally through sets of forms, mm. nomination forms when people to come to contest for an election, mm. and then expressions of interest forms and membership cut as well. Mm. And then there is this membership due that also comes on a monthly basis. Mm. But was that, was that the party? Was someone would tell you that the so governor still you know, have an influence you know, in terms of uh, financing or shouldering the you know, financial burden of the political party? Yes. Uh, before, before governors have no any responsibility mm. of funding party, mm. but certainly mm. chapters of the party also contribute. Mm. And chapters of the party is where you have the governor mm. that also contributes. And then memberships, as I said, contributes through the monthly due mm. sense of nomination mm. forms that the party does as such. And don't mm. forget, PDP mm. has been a very big party. Mm. And I can tell you with accuracy, in 2011, mm. PDP raised over 11.6 billion mm. for sales of forms. Mm. And if a party can have money in such Quantum, yeah. quantum, mm. a working sum of amount can be able to run party effectively without relying on anybody. Mm. And the working quality members mm. have a responsibility also to see mm. that the list of sacrifices, even though they are on salary, mm. the sub of the party are also on salary, mm. and their salary is being paid effectively, except when the party loses, perhaps. Mm. The people who are coming to contribute drastically mm. also discontinue. Why do they discontinue? Because mm. there is no government. Mm. Such people support party because they will also be supported to be empowered, mm. either by getting control or what, what have you. Mm. So these are some of the things that people also get interested and get attracted. Mm. Now it has become the other side of the coin. Mm. It's now the opposition. Yeah. And gradually you're also losing some viable members, like the governors to the APC. I've had three or four that have, you know, joined the force of the APC, and some at, at the exit door again. And the this, you know, it's not enough, and they have an internal crisis. 
How do you think this party can survive, you know, at this very trying time? It's difficult to survive, I do. That is why mm. most people are calling for sanity. Mm. And they have right to call for sanity. They have also right to ask people mm. to check their seals so that things could be resolved amicably. And that is the best way to go. Mm. But when we talk about cost capital of a governor, mm. So people who use party managing and knows all this very well, it doesn't mean you can dismiss. Let him go to anywhere he wants. Mm. Governor cannot make a party. Mm. Governor cannot make a party because it's one individual who possibly don't have experience. But you are talking about they have experience. They don't have, they have no experience. Mm. So you don't mind by saying what governor has let it go. When in that mm. in 2011, how many governors, how many key holders left the party? Mm. And the party is still survived. And they can start the party up to today. Mm. But when they only would argue to observe that PVP is not viable, is viable up to today, is still alive. And but you have been, you know, uh, uh, nursing this only you being, you know, the, the party and, and key stakeholders have been worried about this development. Uh, in recent time, you know, uh, just recently, we've had the former governor of uh, Zigawa State, you know, uh, even bashing, uh, lashing at the presidency uh, for uh, what he called you know, accommodating or showcasing uh, those you know, that, be, <laughs> that have been cost capital to the party. Uh, again, uh, there has been a lot of uh, statements also credited to leadership of the party uh, saying that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the APC is coercing all members, it's intimidating them, it's getting them to, uh, to, to join its fold. And, uh, so, so it shows, you know, largely that uh, these same people that are leaving the party have a, long, uh, you know, a very a huge influence on, on, the, on the party and its fortunes. Well, why do you uh, to be concerned about this cross capital mm. of grassroots mm. members? Mm. When you are losing membership from the grassroots, it's constant to as a political party. Mm. But when you are losing a governor, mm. yes, you may lose a governor. Mm. The governor that you are losing will be seen in the eye of people mm. as a material that you are losing. But perhaps not, mm. as far as party administration is concerned. Mm. And no will abuse your process of mobilization. What you need to do is to get grassroots mm. politicians who can be able to mobilize for you for membership. No. How, but how do you inspire the grassroots membership when, you know, the, the leadership itself cannot uh, be on the same page? When those who matters within the party cannot hold, you know, the party, uh, you know, descending into this uh, chaos and crisis that could lead to uh, a, a, a station or put it on the edge? That is why we are calling for amicable resolution, mm. if possible. And that is why we are calling mm. The municipal chairman should be taxed mm. to explain this mm. situation. Mm. If you can approach to, if you cannot approach to, mm. then you have to also put him through the process mm. of what you so that you can set for redress. And it's allowed of the party, not individual is a party. Mm. This is the chairman should not be seen mm. to do the PDP. Because so which of Congress is not PDP, is a PDP chairman, but it's not the party. Mm. And no individual should also be seen as a party. Mm. It's bigger than an individual. Exactly. Mm. Party is bigger than an individual. Mm. Therefore, individual should not hold party to ransom. Mm. If he's not doing well, mm. he should be addressed. Do you see it to do well? Do you see those you know who should have this responsibility are uh, taking up the challenge, you know, to do the needful in the midst of what is happening now uh, and the varying interest, you know, that are within the party. Do you see uh, such a decision, a, a very, you know, uh, time decision taken, you know, to hold this decide? Yes, we have seen that the responsibility of the, the NEC, mm. the NEC, even if chairman was, has a responsibility to call meetings for NEC, for a NEC, for a NEC, for not be able to call, to tell the members, for mm. NEC can call a meeting. And then you can also have the ability to call a meeting mm. to see how they can address this situation. Mm. If they cannot be able, two members of the party can also take the responsibility as a concerned citizens. Mm. We have seen how concerned citizens within the PDP mm. have put a parallel conviction uh, with Patako and Abuja. Mm. Uh, Jari Sharif, when Sharif came in as a democracy, he was just out. Mm.
legal process. So if a person tries to hold the practice of responsibility to answer to that job, should be against Okay. Okay. Lastly, before we go, uh, how do you think you know uh, this interest can shift their swords, especially uh, now that they've hold you know to their various uh, you know uh, whole, I mean uh, uh, camps, so to speak, and. Uh, struggling for the soul of the party, you know, in the face of all of this crisis. How do you see them coming together, um, you know, and then keeping aside their interest in the interest of the party? You can trust, you can trust PDT for that. Mm -hmm. It has happened on and again, on and again. Sometimes in Batako you have seen what has happened. Mm -hmm. The aspirants mm -hmm. have said they will not agree. Mm -hmm. When I think the matters, they agree. Mm -hmm. In 2011, mm -hmm. that was the same scenario. That was part of convention in Batako and Abuja, the party came together. Mm. This has been a disputation within the party, mm. and it has been covered on one and again. So this will not be an exception. Yeah. Yes, it's not an exception. It will make PDP mm. stronger and stronger. It will work stronger. It will come again. Right, okay. We hope to see it come again so they can be allowed to responsibility of being the major and leading opposition party in the country. Perhaps that will put the ruling party on its toes to deliver the goods to ordinary Nigerians. Uh, I've been interfacing with uh, uh, um, Raja Aminu Salihu Yakudima, uh, the PDP uh, is the chieftain of the People's Democratic Party. Together we've been looking at the party's internal crisis and how they can be resolved uh, in the interest of democracy and the interest of the nation. Thank you very much for talking to us. It's my pleasure to be here. Right, on his behalf and the technical crew, my name is Shafir Suleiman. Democracy in practice.